was 50s actually was better than cocaine. Now it's 40s, so cocaine's doing better than we're doing. But we're still doing way better than this uh, international voice uh, minutes transaction. So whatever services or device that comes to us has to talk this language. Of course, we are not successfully uh, deploying APIs open enough to leverage the developer community to do more than uh, SMS or MMS interconnection today. Some practice uh, for uh, location information or for presence to be exposed is uh, happening in a bounce carrier. Still, the whatever uh, business proposal to the carrier should somehow envision a significant margin. If it does not, uh, it will never become serious for consumer adoption in, uh, let's say, the way the marketing manager think today in the carrier. So, having some uh, 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 I would say innovators or opinion leaders trying some services where the developers have an off-the-shelf off services such as again mashup of widget uh, driven to the mobile or uh, cutting edge new devices for kit tracking or another thing that you are familiar you you know the Verizon Navigator yesterday and the today at TNT Navigator in Italy there is not yet a Vodafone Navigator or a Telecom Italia mobile navigator. There is the TomTom, -tom, consumer widely adopted, and uh, uh, there is some Nokia Maps and Google Maps application, but not a carrier brand and navigator. The only way to talk to the language, to the, to the understanding of the marketing manager, is to do a soft uh, launch or a market trial with a carrier brand and navigator, Look at, the con uh, look at the economics and then after that trying to talk to those uh, developers who had this off-the-shelf product that they successfully, I understand, deployed in the United States and see a rev share opportunity, if there is an opportunity, which most of the time there isn't. So, um, I'll just add one thing. that um, I think it depends on whether, number one, on whether the application is being directed at the consumers or whether it's being directed more at enterprises and the monetization will vary depending on which which side it is so on the consumer side it's most quite likely that you know I mean if you follow the web to all trend um, of people wanting more and more free services and now we don't know whether that will carry over to the mobile as well but but it seems likely that that that's that's what the consumers are used to and it's possible that they will come to the mobile also with that same mindset. Um, it will have to be then definitely uh, advertising will have to play a huge part in that. Um, and and we, uh, we have now creating our own advertising, as I said, business units to help not only to monetize for us, but also help third parties monetize telco assets. And telcos are massive distribution platforms. I mean, so that's one thing where we can definitely help third-party application developers. Um, in all fairness, um, even like some of the biggest Web 2.0 success stories like Twitter, for example, still have about, you know, few million users. You know, I mean, and, and, you know, the amount of exposure that a telco can give a potentially a new application developer who creates an interesting application, is, it's quite enormous. So, so, so that's that's so it. It really depends on whether it's a consumer who's being faced. In enterprises, of course, you can have a more traditional model whereby the um, there is somebody who pays for the application, and then the third-party developer accounts for the cost of the telco APIs in you know as part of their business model in some fashion. Thank you, Asha. Just one comment. So um, I talk to a lot of third-party application developers and. Um, whether it's uh, you know uh, the BEA Dev to Dev Oracle uh, Technology Network partners, and uh, in one summit that we talked to, we uh, sat down with about 15 telecom application developers, and we asked them, so what what is it about partnering with the telco that makes sense? And one one uh, application developer said, if I can't be productive in creating a service in one day's time with that telco API, it's probably too much headache. 
So we dug a little bit more. I said, so what do you mean by one day and what's, what do you, how do you define productive? So one day, one developer day is how many hours, who knows? Uh, but the expectation is that if you go to a, a Google API, or, or in your case, you talked about App Exchange, a lot of the, the application developers have the expectation that they can create something productive within a day's time. And if you apply that same paradigm to the telco APIs, that's the expectation that they have, right? If it takes days, weeks, uh, it's probably, as, as Asha mentioned, it's, it's the selling model, right? What is the usage model? Are you trying to reach the consumers, right? Are you a very web services centric API? Or are you trying to embed something into a, a broader business process? So I think out there is, is that expectation that you have to be very productive right away, which is, um, which is not something that a lot of uh, our customers are uh, overly prepared for as a whole, right? There's very good divisions, I think, that we've seen in our customer base that have been very responsive to wireless services, location-based services, but uh, you really do have to pick the exact application and how do you set that expectation of that application developer? Great, thank you for that question. I think from a lot of the work that I do uh, with operators, the key is in exposing these capabilities, call them APIs, the uh, business model has to be baked into the API. So in joining this early, basically, uh, adopter community to get the recipe right for that country, because this is, I think, a very important point, that we're looking at basically a lot of applications that have fair way down basically on the long tail. These aren't basically going to get 80%, 50%, 20% adoption. These are down in basically the few single digits in terms of adoption. So therefore, local market, market factors have a big impact. So that's why I think one of the common themes that we're seeing from uh, the uh, panelists here is the importance in identifying an early adopter community, having capabilities that uh, can be exposed from the network, and then bringing in application developers to understand how can we get the recipe right for a local market. But Stefan, you had I a point. I wanted to say also, I mean, that's the point I brought at the beginning up is really also an operator needs to trial and, and get the right recipe together. And um, and also you don't know what is really then, I mean, how the customer or actually also the population in your country is reacting when you start exposing kind of data sets. For instance, um, we just recently um, um, launched a cooperation with TomTom where we give them um, information on, on the mobile handset, anonymous, I mean, the anonymous information they, that they use this for their kind of, they call it a high definition traffic service in order to, I mean, to understand what where's the traffic congestion and also providing additional services to the people who buy their kind of navigation systems. So when we announced the strategic partnership, that was a kind of an interesting reaction in the press then saying, okay, what is Swisscom knowing about us, everything? Also, it is anonymous, but can we keep this anonymous in the future so you know there's, there's always you know you the trying out is very important to understand how the how the how the direction is on the market and and therefore it is important that we go to that pass yeah yes i i would add um, a comment to this which is uh, it's uh, probably you you probably heard about the privacy issues around the facebook and uh, I don't want to comment uh, friends great company which has been very much uh, successful but still we're talking about 400,000 customers in Italy and growing since it's in Italian now but this privacy issue it's crucial to the carrier actually for all the scandals you might have heard I mean I think everybody's familiar that carriers know literally everything about sh us about you about us if you expone information about the localization of the mobile phones, you might, which we know, which we know the cell, we might 